Hey everyone, this is More Than Velocity. Uh, I'm Jordan Oseguera, and as always, we got Ryan Croton. And today we have a guest on who we both had the honor of coaching with the Angels. He's got a pretty uh, fun little playing career. His name is Ryan Clark. Uh, he's actually one of the guys that I first ran through one of our original way to ball programs uh, when I was overseeing that with the Angels. So I had the opportunity to kind of coach him in a sense off the field. And then I, I had him in rookie ball when we were mixing him back into gen pop, getting him back in. So I've coached him both in a game setting and in a non-game setting and just been really thankful to kind of keep uh, communication with Ryan as the seasons have gone on. So, you know, Ryan, go ahead and uh, take a couple minutes to introduce yourself and do a better job than I just did. No, that was great. Um, yeah, my name is Ryan Clark. Um, I'm founder of Ripple Baseball here in Columbus, Ohio. Um, like you said, a professional pitcher, past seven years was I played professionally. Um, two years with the Braves, five years with the Angels. And uh, yeah, you guys took me in, you know, when I was at a really low point in my career, really uh, put me through the ringer in terms of the weight room and uh, getting back to where I was. And yeah, I'm really appreciative of that. Thank you, guys. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun to work with you. And that's what I always tell guys is, you know, you're, you know, obviously you're, you're in AAA. You're still working to get back to the big leagues. You're still playing. You're doing those things. And you're someone who has always been a joy to work with. And like you said, we kind of, we got you right when you had just been released from the Braves and you're, you know, oh my gosh, what's going on. And to see your evolution as a player has been awesome. Not just as a player, but you know, as an adult as well, I know you're married now, right. And you right, have all yeah, that going married. for you. And you know, I've, it's, it's been cool to see that trajectory. So uh, it, it's fun to see those guys grow up. And like Ryan says, we're now coaching guys that are getting into coaching. So it's yeah. been, been a cool little progression to see that go. Uh, but you know, before we even get going into it, you're obviously using the arm care system. You're using the platform, you're using technology with the guys you're starting to coach. How have you personally used technology to kind of advance your baseball career on your own and also to help others that you're working with? Right. Um, that's something that I really got introduced to with you guys, right? Having like the gym aware when it comes to lifting weights. Um, I know with the Angels, we started mixing the Rapsodo, actually looking at TrackMan numbers. Um, that's something I never experienced before, before I got to you guys, right? Like in college, it was just the radar gun um, with the Braves. It was kind of make sure everything's a secret. Don't, you know, don't let us know. Um, but, you know, that, that experience has helped me too, because now with my athletes, I let them know all that information, right? Um, when it comes to what makes them better, what I think the biggest thing that comes with technology is that you kind of learn more about yourself and how to be a better you. Right. And I think that's what I try to use from the technology is, okay, this is what you do really well. Don't ever get away from this. Right. Um, obviously be coachable, learn new things. At the end of the day, this is who you are. Um, this is what you can fall back onto. Let's, let's perfect you and then start moving into um, getting you better in other aspects of your game. But one thing that's really cool with uh, your guys' software and app is, um, you know, I know for me as a, as a professional athlete in the off season, didn't spend a lot of time in arm care. Um, I don't know if that's common for a lot of people. I know for me, it was like, I'm in the weight room. I want to lift. I want to throw. Uh, I'll knock out some I's, Y's, and T's, right? Um, and that's kind of the extent of my arm care was. Uh, but like what you guys provide with this detailed, individualized programming, um, especially the testing, we can see where, what we're good at, what we need help with. And you guys give us that plan of attack, right? Which I think is awesome. No, yeah, yeah. we're glad that it's being used that way. And, you know, obviously you're looking at this through the lens of a very high performer. And for people who don't, don't realize, I mean, you you've pitched extremely well in AAA. You've been to big league camps. You've done those things. Go look up his career. Just, you know, quick, quick Google search, go to baseball reference, and you'll see he's got a pretty good resume underneath his belt and go actually do some research. How many guys actually pitch and stay in AAA? It's not an easy thing to do. So it's, it's not a task that anyone should look at and go, Oh yeah, it was AAA. That's a very hard thing to get done in life when it comes down to it. You know, even my illustrious career with pitching in Mexico you know, it's, it's, it's much better than anything I've done. But the point that I'm trying to make with that is you're, you're looking at that arm care system through a high performance lens. And if you don't mind going a little more in depth with ripple, you kind of glazed over it a little bit, but I want you to go into it because it's a pretty cool thing you're doing. And if you can go in how you're using, 
not just arm care, but some pitch development as well with the, with the group you're working with at Ripple. Cause not all the guys at Ripple are high end athletes ready to go pitch in the big leagues right now. You're dealing with some younger guys, correct? Right. Um, yeah. But just starting with the arm care app and like the dynamometer and all the readings that we get with it. Um, it's actually very interesting to me, right? Like I don't have a background of, uh, you know, research to see all these numbers. Like this isn't, wasn't always a part of my life. Right. Um, I know with the angels, we had like a machine that would measure our force output, like internal, external, or hamstring stuff. Like that. Um, but to be able to see it with different athletes of my own, you know, a lot of my guys have really high IR numbers and lack the external. Right. Um, which was interesting because for me, I was the exact opposite. My internal was really weak. My external was strong. And um, it's kind of being able to talk to these kids, learn about like where they feel discomfort and measure it with my own. You know, it kind of can start learning more, you know, taking the information that you give us with the software, but also be able to actually understand it a little bit more, Mm -hmm. be able to teach like, like for me, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I had really much stronger external than internal. And anytime I felt any sort of discomfort, it was like in my bicep, my pec. Um, and I would assume because weaker in the front, something else needs to take over that like force. I would assume. Yeah. Yeah. It's just called uh, what Ryan knows that the complex word for it. I'm like you, you know, I've done research. I've done things like that. I'm on, I'm on some papers, but I put it onto the coach's lens and use those words. It's called like a uh, refer. What's the word for it, Ryan? Referred pain. Referred pain. There we go. I knew it was complex. Mm-hmm. It's not really that complex <laughs> at all. But, you know, with that, you know, you're taking that information, you're applying that to your young athletes, you're applying it to your own career. And, you know, one of the things that I wanted to ask you as well is we've kind of gone over how you've used the system for yourself and with others. But, you know, with that, you're, you're dealing with some, some pain and some discomfort when we got you. And that's obviously a little bit of adversity. That's obviously a little bit of challenge, a little bit of trial. How do you go about approaching that when you came into the angels and we borderline asked you to kind of revamp almost everything you were doing? It wasn't like we said, Hey, keep doing the same stuff that you have been. How do you, how do you kind of give the advice to someone who's being told we need you to adjust your process and what are some initial steps in that to get comfortable with it? Right. Um, I think the biggest thing is just looking inward and seeing like an understanding that, like, I understood that I needed some help, right? Like I went from um, being drafted in the fifth round, having a really good rookie season to really struggling that second, that second year, right? Both pitching wise and physically, like I lost a lot of weight. Um, I wasn't as strong as what I was when I came into professional baseball. Um, So I looked in, you know, angels called, they were like, Hey, we're going to send you through this program. If you, if you're willing to sign with us, um, send you through this program, you won't throw in a game until, what was it? July or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I also had other offers from other teams. I was like, Hey, you're going to go back to where you were. You go back to high a, um, we'll give you a little bit more money than you would have made, you know, kind of incentivizing going and just going back to pitch. Um, and really like the decision, the, the reason why I chose the angels was that, that right there is, I knew that I needed help. I trusted that you guys were going to be able to help me. And I wanted to take care of myself before going back out into the playing world. Right. Um, and, and I think after going through that with you guys, I really started to learn. And as well, I try to teach my athletes is the off season is truly meant for getting better. Right. Like experimenting, try new things, see what works, see what doesn't work. Um, and then once you get into the season, just let it ride. Right. Um, I think when I first started getting into pro ball it was more about the off season, about rest. You want to rest. You want to build back up. By the time you get to spring training, you're not 100%. You're almost there. Spring training is to finish getting ready then go out of the season. And, um, that's what I did. And the entire season, I'm trying to figure out, man, how do I get back to where I was? How do I do this? How do I do that? Um, and you know, now it's just, okay, let's get after it. So when you're in the season, it's almost like it's easier, right? Um, just don't think as much, think less. And that's where the technology comes in. Like we talked about just being a better yourself, think less, just do it, be you, right? 
Yeah, what's that word? It's called intra. Is it introspection or in, introspection? Where it's understanding what makes you tick. What is it, it's, Ryan? Again, you're the words it, guy. I'm not using words today. <laughs> it's it's introspection, and I I've just been thinking about this, and um, you know, one thing that I really like about Ryan is he is an avid learner for himself. You know, some some athletes get into the mindset um, that what they've been doing has been the best thing for them. Um, and Ryan, you know, you can hear him talk that he's, a, he's really a solid evaluator of himself. He knows where the weak points are and what he needs to do. That's important. That, that shows you maturity in an athlete. And, um, I've always liked, you know, working with Ryan, not only is he a, a great athlete and he's got huge capacity, loves to train, you know, in the strength world, he's a dream, you know, he wants to come in, he wants to try everything. But the other thing that I like about Ryan, I think more players have to get to this point is they, they ask good questions. You know, they ask why we're doing certain things, you know, what are the outcomes, what are the benefits? Um, and they also, you know, they share a lot about the things they believe in. And I see the, the tiering of coaches, you know, when you're dealing with an entry level player in rookie ball or your high school age kid, you know, as a coach, you got to really start setting parameters for them. You got to almost, you got to tell them what they need to do. They don't have enough experience to understand what's best for them, you know, and they're getting information for a lot of coaches and they're identifying what, what is the right mix for them. But when you get to a level like Ryan, it's been a few years in pro Bowl already seen another system, you know, had success doing some of the things that he believes in. That's where the beauty happens because, you know, we need to get to a place where we individualize and taking the information from Ryan and giving our information in terms of what we think, we get the, the perfect solution. But he hit the nail on the head is that you got to experiment. You know, players, they, they don't experiment enough because there's a certain fear that um, they may unravel them. And we got to get our kids open to, to new way of thinking and to be able to take in uh, working with new forms of data you know, Ryan is, you know, he's, he's been exposed to data. He even said, I mean, it's, it's right here. He was the previous team that didn't share anything with him, you know, and we've talked to people before Ryan that said, Hey, we don't want to communicate our data with our players. You know, they should just trust us. That that's kind of the mindset. Hey, I'm your coach. Trust me. Well, really when you get to a more advanced stage and, and athletes really got an, a clue about the game, you're really a consultant for this, this athlete. You got to give them the information. You got to let them process the information. You got to guide them what this means. What's the next direction. You got to give options to players, you know, and this is, you know, Ryan's taking this uh, approach as a pro player and he's packaging this personality that he, that he has, which is phenomenal, his work ethic, and, and now he's got this, this curiosity, you know, as a coach and an athlete that's, that's being instilled with his program with Ripple. And, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just excited, Ryan, um, for what you're able to do. I, I have a question and, you know, I'm, I'm really curious about this because I think this is the new wave of baseball is how we can get pro players that also coach. Like, can you talk about that dynamic? Because, you know, you guys are getting baseball at such a high level. You're getting exposed to so much information. Real, you know, real more, quick, can you clarify what you mean by pro players that coach? Because there's a lot of former pro players that go into coaching. Or are you talking yeah, about yeah, coaching yeah, yeah. while you're still playing? While you're playing. Yeah. Okay. Like, we, you know, we just talked to Joe Bimel, you know, and I see Ryan in that similar, you know, vein where, you know, he's he's got to work for his own career on the mound. But, you know, here's this other thing. He's really concentrated on getting other players opportunities mm -hmm. through his tutelage. So, Rye, like, how does this all work? How do you balance all this stuff? Yeah, no, great question. Um, I think the, the way that I really approach it is, you know, like you said, I've seen a lot. I've been through a lot. I've been released. I got drafted relatively high, like had a lot of ups and downs. Right. Um, and, and what I try to do as a coach, is I try to pass on the good, right? Like, this is what worked for me. I want you guys to experience this too. Um, so I try to pass that on. Like, this is, this is the path that I took, right? But there's also some things that I did that didn't work or that maybe I should have stayed away from and maybe just focused more on something else, right? I try to pass that along as well and be like, this is, 
you know, learn from my mistakes, but also build off of what I've um, accomplished, right? Uh, and I actually had a really interesting conversation with my wife the other day about that. Um, my pitching coach, when I was little, I started, sorry, got, I had a pitching coach at 11 years old um, back in Johnson City, New York. And when my pitching coach went to College of Charleston, which is a really big deal, um, ended up getting, I don't know if he got drafted by the Astros or had an opportunity to play with the Astros. Uh, I think he, la he lasted one year or he got hurt and that was it. Um, but he did the same thing to me. So it's like, I learned from what hit from his accomplishments. He wanted to like stray me away from his failures that, you know, I shouldn't even be worried about. And it's almost like building off of that. Right. So he had the opportunity. I played now. I want to help kids. You know, I want, I want my athletes, my kids to be better than me. Right. And I always joke with uh, a lot of my pitchers. Uh, I have one, one kid, he's a senior now, and he's like into like the low to mid nineties. And I always tell him, I'm like, Hey, once you throw harder than me, I can't help you anymore. You better find someone else. Mm -hmm. Right. Just because I think also it's important as coaches that we, I don't know if the word, the word's not really like stay in our lane, but like understand, like, you know, so much. Right. And there's other people out there who know more than you about something else. So like push that player to the people who know what they're talking about. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I don't yeah, ever want to be saying. like the coach. Yeah. Like I don't ever want to be the coach that's, you know, you ask me a question and I'm going to fake it. Right. I'm going to give you an answer. That sounds good. Um, that might, it might help you, you know, like my answer might help you, but I would much rather send you to somebody. Like if somebody has like an, like a, like a question about, strength and conditioning or arm care, right? Like I've been around it enough to kind of have an understanding, but I would rather push them to Croton, right? Have someone with his knowledge to actually help the kid too. So I think that's where, um, you know, we have all these experiences. We have these connections. We know people, like we know what generally works. We know what generally doesn't work and just making sure that you stick to that. Yeah. One, one way I like to look at it, what you're saying is I say, well, imagine there's this big pie chart and that's a hundred percent of all the baseball knowledge in the entire world that anyone can ever know. And if you know 50% of it, you, there's still a lot you don't know. And in reality, a really good coach probably knows 15% of all that because there's just so much that someone else is way better at understanding a slider. They're way better at understanding how to throw a split finger. This guy's way better at teaching a four seamer. This guy's way better at teaching deadlift, whatever it may be. And just say you're the expert in your field, you still probably only know 15% when it comes down to it. There's a lot of information that needs to keep being learned. And, you know, just to kind of piggyback on something Croton said earlier, I don't want to just keep saying Ryan because you're both Ryan. Um, hmm. But, you know, I remember having you. And one of the first conversations we had, I remember sitting you guys down in the little lecture hall room thing there and going, look, if there's a question you guys have on what we're doing, you need to ask me. Because if you're not bought in because you're a little unsure, you need to ask. And you were always a player that would go, hey, well, what if I tried this? If I shifted the seams like this, what do you think would happen? And instead of – like there was times that I was like, shoot, I don't know. Let's go put you on track, man, and find out what does happen in your next bullpen. Let's see what it does. And it was always one of those things we could find a way to get your stuff a little bit better. And, you know, that time I was coaching in rookie ball along with traveling a little bit. I think my title at the time was like – it was like a Dwight Schrute you know, like assistant to the regional manager type of title, something like that. Like I would travel a little bit, but I was coaching rookie ball and doing the, it was a weird, weird role. But I remember it's like, you were the only guy that I had who actually had some experience and some knowledge of going, well, what if I tried this? Cause everyone else was green. They were straight from the Dominican. They were, you know, just trying to figure out how to, well, what, what do I do? How do I go buy groceries? You know, and, or they're 18 year old fresh out of high school. And I, I had someone there that was like, hey, what if I tried this? How about this? What if we tried this on a curveball? Because I remember you were, am I going to be a slider guy or am I going to be a curveball guy? Am I going to pitch up in the zone? Am I going to pitch down in the zone? And there was a lot of things that you were learning about yourself. Um, so if you don't mind kind of going through that process, I know we've touched a little bit, but if you want to, we can get deeper into that of how you kind of start asking yourself these questions of going, is what I'm doing working? And how do I justify wanting to make that change? I don't know if that question made sense. Um, I think it did. I'll do my best. Uh, <laughs> kind of like what my interpretation, um, I think this goes back to having like that technology, right? Um, so now with all the technology that we have, we can 
I like to, I like to coach trying to teach kids feel right. Like I said, be like, Hey, you need to do this better. You need to do that better. It's like, how'd that feel? Right. Um, and something doesn't work. Let's try something else. How's, how did that feel? That's the question. Then they kind of come back. And um, so just like when we can combine, I think our feel with the technology, that's where we can start figuring out who we are. Like I was telling you the other day, we were talking, I was texting you about change ups, right? Mm -hmm. And our, my entire life, I was told, this is how you hold the change up. You let the grip do the work and you just throw it, right? Well, my change up has always sucked. It's been terrible. Um, and then I started messing around with it, you know, changed my grip. I was like, well, if I can't, and like after, after getting like the rap soda certification, learning more about physics, it's like, okay, wherever the front of the baseball goes, that's where the ball's going to go. So let's create that movement. And like, I'm not, I'm not making my arm go crazy. You know, I'm not doing like a whip or something like that. It's just like a little, little something and gets the front of the baseball going the right direction and starts moving really good. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, I could tell by the way it looked, I could tell by the way it felt that it was good. Let's have this technology just let me know, was that good? Was that not right? Um, and I remember sending you a video of the grip and you're like, yeah, uh, we, that probably wouldn't have flown when, you know, we were in the same organization <laughs> together, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we had some guys that would have said, you can't throw that change up grip here because I didn't throw that change up grip in the big leagues. And you would have been shut down. And it's a really good changeup. You sent me the numbers. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's a plus changeup. And you wouldn't be allowed to throw that. That's a rant for another day. I'll, <laughs> I'll let you finish talking. <laughs> yeah. But that's, so that's kind of like, um, so like that feel is kind of your understanding of yourself, right? So like, how did my body feel on this throw? How did, how the, how did the release feel, right? And we know what feels good and we want to replicate that. So I think that's like the reassurance in the, in the data saying, okay, you're able to replicate this. This is good. It feels good. You don't even have to think to do it anymore. Right. Um, and then and I, don't know, I don't know if this applies to the same question, but when it comes to like coaching, coaching uh, like mechanics, which I, I, I do coach mechanics, but I try to stay away from like cookie, cookie cuttering everyone. You know, it's, you look at the big leagues, how many guys throw exactly the same, mm -hmm. right? Like, Nobody does. Everyone throws a little bit weird and that's what makes them great. Right. And uh, going back to what you guys were saying about like the knowledge of, of uh, baseball, I almost think of it as if we don't actually know what is right. Right. Like we have an idea. We have like the right idea. We know, you know, like hip shoulder stuff, like tort, all, all those, like it's starting to get up there more now. Um, but we know what's wrong. Right. Like we know, shouldn't be doing this, uh, can add more stress to certain areas. We know that stuff, right? So I try to allow kids to embrace what feels good to them again, right? Like if, if a kid can't lift his arm up above his shoulder, you know, we know we don't want to like get his, put like all that stress on his elbow or shoulder, but we want to get him to feel comfortable throwing too, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's just, all of that together is kind of, you know, how I internalize it all. But yeah, I mean, I keep going, but <laughs> yeah, I think one thing that's kind of applicable for me now is, you know, I've told Ryan, we've told a couple other people that have, that have been on the show. It's been a recent uh, thing for me, but I've gotten back into coaching in a team atmosphere and I'm coaching at a high school. I believe I talked with you about it a little bit as well at some yep. point, but you know, now I'm to the point that when I first got there, I said, who here's a pitcher and no one raised their hand. And I said, oh, this isn't good. You know? So I'm having to teach these guys how to pitch. And I'm taking infielders and outfielders that have never thrown off of a mound before. And I'm, I'm using technology to make sure I'm building them up appropriately. Cause with guys yeah. that are new to a position, you have to be really careful with that. And one of the things you were talking about is like, you know, how is this grip working? What's this doing there? And it kind of triggered something in my mind where we have one of the guys we're working with who he is learning how to throw a changeup for the first time. And his changeup grip is about as non-traditional as you can get it but he's a, he's a right-hander. He spins that thing at three o'clock and gets it to have arm side run and fade to it. And it's like, I would never tell someone to change up with that grip, but it works. And yeah. it's one of those things. Like if we didn't have the data and the technology to validate that really weird grip, it's like, I don't even know how to replicate it with my hand and the video, you know, it's, it's a weird grip, but it works. And yeah. like, who am I to go in there and say, well, just because I've never taught it that way means that it's wrong. And it's, it's just like you're saying, we know what doesn't work, but it's moving in the right direction. It's getting the spin characteristics we want. 
it's a weird grip, but we know that what it's doing traditionally will work. So who am I to right. say you can't throw with that grip? So I, I, I think you, you covered that pretty well. I thought it was a, was a good little talking point. And uh, Ryan, you look like you might have, well, Croton, you look like you might have something you want to jump in there and talk about. Go can, ahead, I, can I build off of, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like talking about your, your new job as like the coach of that high school, that's awesome. Um, and that's kind of where, so where like arm care comes in for my facility is um, think about how many guys that you have to take care of at your high school, right? You have all these guys um, and Columbus is a very competitive. Uh, it so is bring back, like bring back to baseball high school. mecca of that area. I didn't realize how competitive it was. There's some school, there's some, there's some high schools here who run themselves like colleges, right? Like yeah. they have, uh, there's one high school. I don't know if I can say school names here, but um, Upper Arlington High School here just built a brand new gym that's nicer than any college gym I've ever seen. It's like right mm-hmm. attached to their high school, right? And it's it's unbelievable. And they run it like it's a college, right? Um, but where I think that the arm care app and where what how I'm coming, like what I'm bringing to the table with the arm care app is those kids, they have freshman JV varsity. Um, another high school has two varsity teams. They have a varsity A, varsity B. Um, think about how many kids that is to how many coaches there are who are not dedicated, just baseball coaches. They're teachers. They're, you know, they have other jobs. Um, but the arm care app and software allows each kid to have that attention, even though it's not from another human per se, like, yeah, they come in, I test them. Um, you know, we, we use it with ourselves. Like, yes, it's one-on-one personal training, that type of idea, but also allows them to, you know, they have that resource, which normally they wouldn't because there's too many kids to take care of. Right. And I think that's what, for me, that's the biggest use of the arm care app is, and that's like what I, why I don't force anyone to get it right. Like if they have to want it to get it. Um, I think, but that's like the biggest thing that I sell to them is this will help you stay strong, right? This will give you that individualized attention for your arm, you know, um, and your core and all these different things. It's not, you know, the, it's not, you're doing the same thing as everybody else. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you just do better than everyone else. Right. It's individualized approach. We're going to take what you're good at. You're going to keep, keep that up and figure out what you're deficient at. And we're going to make you better. Right. Um, And it's, and it's easy, right? Like arm care, the arm care app, Dynamo, it's, it's easy. I think that's the best part. It's easy for a kid. You know, if, if I allow my kids who have it just to come in whenever they want, they want to test themselves. Awesome. Right. I don't have to be there to do it. Um, and I think that's the best part about what you guys do. Yeah. And that's awesome. like, just to piggyback on what you're saying there is I haven't coached high school kids in a pretty long time. And I haven't coached in the high school atmosphere for over a decade. I started coaching at a high school, but it's so disconnected that man, it's, I did six or seven years in college and about six years in pro ball. So I'm, like I said, I'm over a decade. So, but it's like, you're saying it's easy enough. I have an actual dynamometer here. I hand them a dynamometer and say, go do your test. And then, you know, I, they go do their stuff. They do what they need to do. I check it. Hey, you do this. Hey, you do that. Da, 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 da. But, and I'm looking at things through a different lens as well to where you're looking at the world of baseball through a different lens. You're used to looking at it through what can I do for Ryan Clark? And now you're looking at it through what can I do for player A, player B, player, player C, D, E, F, G, and Ryan Clark. And you're looking at it through this different lens. And I'm looking at it through the lens of a manager now. and it's, it's a different game when you're a manager, all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I have to make sure the infielders, I don't just worry about pitchers anymore. I'm doing all this other stuff, but it makes it way easier. Cause then you don't get overwhelmed with, oh my gosh, I have 20 some odd guys that I got to worry about. It's like, okay, now I know that this is going to be taken care of for those guys. And now I can move on to steps B. And then I know he's going to be able to take care of this on his own. And it's got to be the same on your end for, for running a facility in the sense of going, Okay, now I can work on pitch development with this guy because I know his arm care is taken care of. You were talking about that individualization. And I know I'm kind of saying the same thing you did from that different lens, but I think that's one of the cool things about having a guy on like yourself is you can put the lens on from what you're seeing and you have the empathy to put it on from what that other guy's seeing and be able to marry those two ideals together and use the technology in an appropriate manner without convoluting the information. Yeah. 
No, absolutely. Thank you, right one on. of the one of the things that um, you know, I think just you know, we're going remote in this world. You know, there the and, and that's what's going to happen. You know, the the guys who are out there that are players that are listening to this and and they have their own competitive responsibilities, like yourself, Ryan. Um, you know, we're making it easy. There's a coaches app. There's a dashboard that you can use. You know, and, and you know, taking a little bit of time in your day to review, you know, who's got the most sensitive data. It's only a matter of a few text messages. You know, if they are using our app to train, that's one thing. So it's already going to be exporting a program based on the data. But if, you know, coaches are developing their own, it's just basically a text and telling them, hey, we're going to adjust this and that, you know, before you do your arm care today. Um, this is what I'd like for you to do. And it, it just makes it very useful for the busy coach. And, and we need to get there. And the other thing that I'm always concerned about is when we want to do something mechanically with an athlete. And this was an issue I had in pro ball myself is that when we made a mechanical suggestion, we didn't really evaluate what was happening at the arm. We didn't, we didn't use tools to the best of our ability and we didn't have enough bandwidth. We didn't have enough um, manpower because we were running those tests to see, hey, what we're asking the athlete to do is actually making their arm more fatigued, you know, and this thing will give you as a coach, you know, and all the coaches out there, they do a post bullpen evaluation. They do a post game evaluation. You can compare it. What's the strength levels going, what, what's been going on since this mechanical change to know if you have to pivot, you know, is this a programming aspect that I have to worry about? Do I have to lower the intensity or the competitive schedule for the athlete to build up arm strength? You know, we can make those adjustments so that when there is a mechanical change, it's putting the athlete in the best place. The place where we don't want to get to is where we ask them to change their mechanics and it alters the, the strength levels of the throwing arm. And we don't do, we don't know, you know, we're not doing anything about it, you know, while they're learning this new, maybe this new arm path, you know, now the arm comes out of the glove a little bit differently and it increases, you know, some of the mechanical costs of the muscles in the arm. And then, you know, we have this data, it allows that coach to be able to go in and say, hey, for right now, I'm noticing that your strength is starting to go down since I've asked you to do X, Y, and Z. We're going to lower your pitch count levels so that your fatigue levels aren't as high after games and build your strength. And for me, that puts you guys as coaches in a great place to not only train performance, but also health. Because the last thing you want to do is ask a player to change the way they're they're, they are in their delivery. You know, I'm sure Ryan, you as a player, you've been asked a whole bunch of times to do certain things, but it sets them up potentially for risk because we're not accounting for what the strength changes may occur based on those recommendations. Yeah. And, and building off of that, um, I had two kids last summer who had arm injuries, you know, not like I think extremely serious, but I think it also allows us to have information data where, you know, luckily I, I know, like we can, we can talk to the physical therapist, right. And this is what, these are what their numbers are showing. This is how, this is what arm care is telling him to help with that. So how can you use this information as well? Right. How can you build off of mm -hmm. the program from arm care and maybe you can accomplish more in your one PT session a week because he's taking care of all these other things away from you. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, and off of that is, um, that kid I was telling you, that's, you know, throwing harder now. He's like, in, like 90, 92, um, Wednesday night. He's one of those kids. He had like a minor surgery in his shoulder. It was just to like clean it up a little bit. And he was terrified. Right. Um, he's like, man, like he's really dedicated. He works hard. He's going to do everything he can to get back. And it was scary. Right. Um, and you guys came in right at the perfect time for him because not only did you like, was it a lot of, did you allow him to track his strength gain getting back into his shoulder? It also helped me to tell him, Hey, you need to pump the brakes a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're not going to throw hundred percent. We're just going to play catch. It's going to be light, you know, um, going off of that number, that 70, right. Um, 70% 70 of your weight and strength. It's like, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to take it easy until you get there. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know for myself, like I'm not at that 70 number yet, which I thought was, like crazy too. Cause like I, I throw relatively hard. Right. Um, and still I don't have that strength number. So like, that's, it's cool. It's cool. Like it's interesting. It's cool. But just to show him like, Hey, like 
this is where you're at. We need to get here before you can even think about competing velocity wise, right. Or throwing other pitches, like let's wait till we get there. And he's like, all right, you know, like he, he's like, okay, I have a goal, not just, um, I think Crow and we've talked about on a, on a zoom call before with like throwing programs for rehab and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Here's a throwing, like you can get a throwing program, right. But you don't actually know if it's working. Yeah. You just, you're, you're just told that it works, right? Yeah. Like go out this far for this amount of time. Okay, cool. But each person's different. And I think that's where you can bring in the arm camera, bring in the throwing program. Okay. Uh, he's a lot stronger than he should be at this point. Can we push him a little bit more or he's way weaker at this point where he should be stronger. We need to just take a step back in his rehab and work on, you know, strengthening his shoulder before something mm-hmm. happens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think you, I think you said that pretty well. Um, and, you know, having the better understanding of what's going on internally helps you to not just plan for today, but for tomorrow and the short term, the midterm and the long term of what it is you're going to be doing. Um, look, I know, I know we're running short on time here. So before we go any further, uh, where can someone find information about Ripple? What, what's the website? What's the Instagram? What's the Twitter feed? What, what, like, what do we need to uh, be talking about here with Ripple? Yeah, I mean, um, everything is just Ripple Baseball. So at Ripple Baseball on Twitter, Instagram, RippleBaseball.com. Um, yeah, and part of what we do is, you know, I'm not, not recruiting service, but I try to highlight my players as well. Because yeah. um, ultimately, that's the goal, right? I want to help kids get to the next level. I want them to reach their potential see how far they can go and hopefully they make it right. Hopefully Mm -hmm. they do something I haven't done and make it to the big leagues and uh, have a long career. So um, yeah, ripplebaseball.com and on Twitter, Instagram. Perfect. But as always, it's, it's great to catch up with you, Ryan. And, you know, we'll obviously be staying in touch. And if anyone has any questions, email us, email uh, ripple baseball, we'll get them over to Ryan and make sure that we get those, uh, get those answered for you. And uh, yeah, if there's any questions, shoot them over. Awesome. Thank you guys for having me.